This is a locals component of the American Bouldering Series. Nice. There's many, actually hundreds of competitions held throughout the United States. Through these locals, the competitors qualify for a regional, then a divisional, and then, you know, if they go beyond that, it's a national level competitions. So the idea behind bouldering is you climb as high as you're willing to fall from. In the gym, that's generally not any higher than 15 feet tall. And generally what we try to do as the competition organizers is we'll try and pack more difficulty into a shorter amount of climb, more, uh, more gymnastic movement over a smaller space of wall. The start and the start and end hold are always marked with two pieces of tape. As the setters, the people who actually put these roots on the wall, we try to think of creative ways to get the climbers to move. So one of the things you'll notice about this one is the starting hold is almost eight feet off the ground, which means that the climber actually has to jump from the ground to reach the starting hold. The idea is to follow that same tape color all the way through the climb using all those different handholds, ideally in an intended sequence that we want you to use the holds in a given way. We're looking to get them to move in a certain way on their way to the finish hold, which is also designated by double piece of tape in the same color as the starting hold. highly intensive on your upper body for bouldering, um, but uh, that doesn't rule out the idea that uh, technical footwork and like being really efficient with using your feet helps you. One of the other things you definitely notice is that um, when you have hands the size of an adult's hands, some of these small holds are no good, but when you're the size of someone like Moira over there, you can fit four fingers in something that's about the size of a quarter. I mean, she may lack a lot of the power that an adult's gonna lack, but she can hang on to things that are literally like dime, dime edges. She's hooking it up. Like, that's crazy. It has a huge crossover from things like yoga, dance, things that women uh, pretty regularly participate in because it involves a lot of body awareness and movement awareness. Um, all of that correlates over to climbing directly. Well, one of the best things about climbing is, in general, we stray away from the idea that there's a winner. I mean, pretty much even a bad day climbing is better than, you know, most days doing anything else. Keep it strong, strong. Feeling it yet? Push it. Drop and give me 25 push-ups. Everyone, 50 more squats. Come on, do it right now. I teach uh, aquatic boot camp. It's a fitness class. Come on, fight through that water, ladies. Push it. And we try to make it a little bit like boot camp. Drop and give me 20. I'm not your typical drill sergeant. Turn around. I'm not the big yelling mean person. Good job, keep it up. But I tell my class this sweet little innocent voice can make you do 50 more push-ups or squats. Come on, speed it up, speed it up. I've never been in the military, but um, I have family who, and friends who are. Are you guys feeling it yet? And they help influence this class. Come on, push it. Keep it going strong. Sometimes I'll hoop and give a little whoop, but no, I don't think I want to yell back at her. I might get, you know, 30 or 40 more. <laughs> Keep working hard, push it. Keep that back nice and straight. Now I understand why my grandpa says that boot camp is 
pretty kind of hard for him. And let's drop and do another 20. 20, give me 20 more. Give me 20 push-ups. I'm pretty sore. <laughs> yeah, when we do push-ups, we're done. She says, no 20, you're like, oh my god. My arm's already sore. <laughs> we can just keep going. I get sort of a rush from um, yelling at him. And do another 20. And take it into some squats. Let's bring it into the wall and grab those weights. Make sure you get those arms pumping in the water. Don't let it control you, control it. Push it, one more, keep it hard. It's a little hard because um, I respect older people and you don't really want to start yelling at an older person. But I do my best to try since it's my job. And bring it behind you and glute kicks. I am a little bit of a quiet person. You're stronger than that water. I do like teaching it though, it gives me sort of like an empowerment that I'm helping people. Let's keep it going strong. And that's what you want to do as a lifeguard or fitness instructor. And slice that water. Is everyone cramping up? Feeling it yet? Fight that water, ladies. You get a good workout and bank some calories. They're doing excellent. They're working hard. It's a great way to start a Saturday morning and kick off your weekend. Come on, keep it up, push it, push it. Knee all the way down. I want my students to take away feeling that they've accomplished something and that they've really worked hard and learn how to push themselves when they're exercising. And when the class is over, I can't wait till next Saturday to come because she works us out really good. Okay, class is done. You guys feel it today? Good. So this is our practice for today. We're gonna to go through uh, possibly up to four drills, three of them offensive, one of them defensive. Let's get to it. Ultimate is a game that's played with seven on seven on a typically soccer or football sized field. Catch the frisbee, you can't run with it, so you have to advance it by throwing it to other members of your team, and you score a goal by catching it in the end zone. Usually games go to 15, uh, usually win by two based on a time cap as well. And the co-ed game, is not even a blend between the two, it's a totally different game. You have to figure out how to utilize all your advantages um, in a different way than anybody has. Go, go break, go break. That's fine. One, one, still one, still two, three. It's nice to have a good balance, get the sub, uh, substitutions in, get everybody involved and, uh, and involved in the game. Hammer is over the head, uh, kind of over the top, upside down. And there's hucks, there's short throws, there's dumps, there's swings. Uh, where you're throwing it on the field and how far that is also dictates kind of what the name of the throw is as well. Basically two offensive positions. You're either a handler working the disc up in the front of the field or a receiver receiving the disc downfield. My favorite throw is when they catch it. So. <laughs> Three, two, one, disc in. So, two. It's a very fast paced, very active, very aerobic sport that uh, Ultimate Frisbee one. makes you have to be prepared for. Three, four, five, up. You know, ultimate is really about grit because when you're running up and down a field like this, you know, even in soccer, I, I don't know that you're sprinting this much for this long. So it's really about your guts and your heart and, and how badly you want to try. Um, and I really love that. Chasing a disc, it's kind of like a golf swing. Every now and then, one out of ten swings, you'll get that sweet spot. And that's the, that's the sweet spot that keeps you coming back to the sport. Well, Frisbee's like that, where you get that great catch, whether it's over your defender or laying out for the disc, coming up with grass stains with the disc in your hand, and you know that that's what makes the sport so great and what's, what keeps you coming back to play year after year. And, uh, and it's all about playing disc with your homies in the barrio, and that's really uh, what we feel is the vibe of barrio, is being out here playing disc with each other, having fun on a beautiful Tucson morning, and, uh, and taking that around uh, the nation and hopefully international someday. Uh, to show them what Barrio is all about, a, a fun, spirited team that One, looks two, to play three, Frisbee three, hard and fast and, uh, and always have fun doing it. Barrio! 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 Barrio!
get off the couch, Tucson.